you know, Truman had, had uh, his executive order had come out in 1948. You had become a naval recruiter, and, you, and things had changed for the better. Some things had changed mm-hmm. for the better. Now, um, you went, uh, as I recall, was it, was it the USS Iowa was your first? That was after my recruiting tour was over. I went to the USS Iowa. And I was there about 18 months. Now, were you um, were you anxious to 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 move on from the recruiting thing? I mean, yeah. In fact, I asked for sea duty. I put on a request for sea duty, and that's what I got out of it <laughs> was to go to the USS Iowa, and I was very very happy. I hadn't been to it. Anything but this little PC, which is just like a floating duck compared to the Iowa. Iowa was a battleship. It was over three football fields long. Weighed 60-some thousand tons. It was a big ship. 16-inch guns. Used to fire 24 miles. and You know, mm-hmm. those kinds of things. The real, the real deal. The real deal. Mm-hmm. I went to the Iowa, caught it in... Uh, Long Beach, California, and that morning it was getting underway, and I missed it, so I had to stay in Long Beach an extra week, and then when it came back in, I caught it that Friday or something like that, and now, went aboard. Now, I understand that when you went aboard, you discovered a certain letter that had come from... Yeah, there was, was a letter that had come from the Chief of Naval Operations saying that they were sending me board a black officer he needs to be treated like any other officer and that was about all I said and so the the commander of the Iowa had what had a briefing or something about you before you came to the best of my knowledge he had a briefing with the entire wardroom telling them that I was coming and that he realized that some of might have a problem with bunks and all the rest of this garbage and that um, he had to sleep with somebody (laughs) And he would appreciate it if one of them would take me in as his roommate. And uh, when I got, when I the guy who showed me the letter was the guy that I was rooming with, because he swore that he was the only one that wanted to wanted to sleep with me. And uh, how did that make you feel? Sorry, but I really oh. His microphone cable sticking up. Oh, oh, okay. So anyway. Uh, I moved in. Wait, wait, wait. Anytime, anytime. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so this this guy claimed your roommate on the Iowa claimed that you were the only that he was the only one. Only officer who was willing to bunk with me. Live in the same room. Had two man bunks or two man room. Again, what did you think of that? What did you think of the whole thing? I mean, the, the, I just effect, the letter and the whole... Yeah, well, the letter, I said, well, that, that's probably what I would have done if uh, here I'm getting something strange coming aboard my ship and I wanted everybody to know about it. That, that was no problem with that. But, uh, but t- I mean, I, I was you little, were the thing that was strange. I yeah, mean, I know, but I was disappointed that the guy wanted to make a point of telling me that he was the only guy on there out of 100 officers who wanted to sleep with me in the same room that I did. That upset me a little bit because I wouldn't have said that. Did it turn out to be true? Did I you? don't know. I really don't know. I, I subsequently bunked with several other officers, and maybe it might have been so at that time, but it wasn't so by the time I had been aboard there for six months. And they'd seen that I did my job just like they did their jobs. 